We are battling that, uh, that we, in our daily bread. We are battling in forgiving others. And we are battling who receives the glory. And then we also talked about prayer uh, last Sunday. And I want to still dwell around there. Tell your neighbor dwelling around there. Because, you know, it is like I have not Sija Penya. I want to Penya Penya Kidogo. And I, I know we will be blessed. The book of Matthew chapter number 6. Verse 14 and 15 in the New Living Translation says this. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Bless the name of the Lord. C.S. Lewis, one of the Christian historians, and writer said this, Forgiveness is a beautiful word until you do something to forgive. So forgiveness can be a very wonderful word, isn't it? Oh, powerful word, forgiveness. But it will remain a beautiful word until you do an action of forgiving. I want to talk about that battle that we talked about, a battle of forgiving. If you have spent any time in church at all, you realize the importance of forgiveness. Because in church, we have a lot of opportunities of missing it. For example, Millicent has an opportunity to forgive all of you because 99% of you never showed your face in her graduation. She has an opportunity to forgive you. Imagine, Millicent, you have an opportunity to forgive all of us. So in church, we have that opportunity to forgive. Why? Because sometimes somebody has sat on your seat, the place you normally sit, and you come and now you feel like, no, in church, if you've been in church long enough, you have a great opportunity to forgive. Amen? Sometimes there are no notes like today. So you have an opportunity to forgive me in a time like today. You have a great opportunity. So if you have been in church long enough, God has given you opportunity, tons and tons of opportunities to forgive others. You know that it is a biblical concept. You have read verses like our text. You may even have been warned about the physical, emotional, and spiritual consequences of unforgiveness. If you have been with us in the nuts and bolts, we have talked about it. Even in the encounter, we talk about it, how it can hurt you, how it can bind you if you lack to forgive another person. And of course, you are in no doubt genuinely grateful for God who was willing to forgive you because he took a human form like we have done now as we have taken the Holy Communion. He took a human form, came and dwelt with us and all what he wanted was to forgive you and to forgive me. Bless the name of the Lord. Why then is there such a, a discrepancy between our understanding of forgiveness and our willingness to grant it to others? Why? Why do we have that, uh, you know, we have a big problem. I know we like to be forgiven. Amen. But do we forgive? Because that's a key. I like to be forgiven. Don't you? I told you last Sunday, if there is someone, if you are in a couple, you live with your husband and wife, you have opportunities actually to forgive each other. Because if you don't, uh, nail by mouth can appear many times. Where you nod. And you know, a story is told, maybe just before I continue, there of this couple that had nail by mouth for a week. They were not talking to each other. And so the man wanted to catch a plane. He was leaving for Europe for some big meetings. But it was nearby mouth. So he wrote down and said, Honey, please wake me at 5.30. And slept. And the honey woke up at 5.30 and said, Honey, wake up. It is 5.30. 
Now you can see the story. The story ended up, he woke up at 7.30 and he quarreled her and she said, you can't quarrel me. You also wrote down, I also wrote up. You would have woken up, checked on it, then you would have done what you have done. Now it costed them a lot. I pray that it doesn't happen to any couple in here. Uh, at least, kuongea kidogo, inasaidiaga sana. A respected counselor and author, David uh, Simards, observes this. That most emotional problems among evangelical Christians are caused by the failure to understand, failure to receive, and failure to live out God's unconditional love and forgiveness and grace to our people. Failure to live what God's standard is of forgiving others and releasing others that have bound you. So the issue of forgiveness touches each one of us every day. Every day. Occasionally, it is um, a major crisis that forces us to choose between forgiveness and unforgiveness. For example, unfaithful spouse, unwanted divorce, unfair termination from your job, sexual abuse, and so on and so forth, and so forth. Slanderous rumor and so on and so forth. Regardless of the size of the offense. Let me say that again. Regardless of the size of the offense, forgiveness is not usually the preferred response. It is not. Why do Christians actually who have been forgiven so much have difficulties forgiving others? Why? Why do Christians that have been forgiven have so, you know, they feel so hard and so difficult to forgive others? There are three reasons why I cannot forgive. Three reasons I cannot forgive. Three reasons. Number one, why I cannot forgive is because I don't understand what forgiveness is and what it isn't. So I can't forgive because I don't understand what forgiveness is and I don't understand what it is not. Let's join in somebody, a group of researchers who did some research some couple of years ago. And I also want you to join in in that research, although some of you will tell me something, but a lot of you will not say much, but you think about the question that I'm going to ask. How would you respond to the following questions from the survey? Rate each statement as accurate or inaccurate description of forgiveness. Number one statement. You cannot honestly forgive someone unless that person shows remorse for what they did. Accurate? Accurate? No. Inaccurate. If you really forgive someone, you would want that person to be released from the consequences of their action. Accurate or inaccurate? If you, are genuinely, if you genuinely forgive someone, you should rebuild your relationship with that person. Accurate or inaccurate? If you have really forgiven someone, you should be able to forget what they have done to you. Accurate or inaccurate? Now, can I tell you something? All the responses above are wrong. The biblical perspective is that each of those statements are wrong. They are wrong. Why? Because they are myths. 
kuna vitu myth 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 in hindu <laughs> identified above that confuse the issue of forgiveness from many people and we are going to deal with all these questions and some of them when god gives me another opportunity a failure to understand the true nature of forgiveness leads to prolonged bitterness illegitimate fear illegitimate fears and unnecessary guilt and it prevents us from receiving and granting it or granting life to others so in other words you can be bound you can be held captive by some of these failure to understand it can lead to prolonged bitterness yani ukipita mali mwalimu wako alikuwa akiishi na alifariki kitambo moyo unadunda na hako ka mwalimu you know <laughs> na jamaa alikufa kita meaning wewe bado imekufu imekufunga it is it, it may god help us may god help us so i don't understand what forgiveness is and what it is not because i don't understand then i suffer now that failure to understand the true nature of forgiveness can I lead me not to forgive others secondly i'm riding the guilty blame see so see so see sure <laughs> I, I, I see show thank you thank you is is something that would be like this hapa kuna chuma imefungwa mbao sio sawa yule anaenda hivi na huyo anaenda hivi hebu ita na kiingereza wewe we, ukutoka kwetu <laughs> I'm riding the guilty blame C and yeah thank you. <laughs> Remember riding as a C as a child what happened when a mischievous playmate suddenly scrubbed off the seashore. <laughs> yani ka jamaa mlikuwa mnaenda hivi alafu kwa ghafla kalikuwa kama kufika pale chini kanatoka mara moja pop what happens? Poo the crash is now the boys used to do that girls are good hopefully unless there was a mischievous one the only way you and your partner could ensure a safe landing was to get off that sea simultaneously so you get to a place you say chuka na mimi ni shuke In the human mind there is a sea with one sided labeled guilt and the other side labeled blame There is a sea one side labeled guilt and the other one labeled blame The only way to keep the sea so in balance is to make sure you have enough blame and balance it with guilt now i want to speak to you we are talking about forgiveness a lot of us what we have i said these are some of the things that we carry over and over and over that's why we don't forgive because what we do immediately you are guilty you heap a few blames kama si pasta sikuku mimi ninge eh kama si deliverance church mimi ni what you have done there is some conviction somewhere but and you are guilty about it but instead of learning to receive it and forgive you pick the blame now it has to be enough so that the sea can stay balanced Wow. The more guilt you feel 
for your mistakes, the more blame you must pile on to remain in emotional equilibrium. equilibrium. But what happens if you suddenly get rid of the blame towards others through forgiveness without also removing your guilt? You will emotionally crash. Yani, ukizuacha tu maramoja, uta crash. So there must be a way of getting out. One reason we are hesitant to forgive people is that it is much easier and safer to blame others for our problems than to blame the most logical culprit who is supposed to be me. It's easier to blame everybody else. Why did you not get A in biology? Because I did not like the teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm. Are you sure? <laughs> I had a relative, actually. <laughs> Very interesting relative. <laughs> we used to laugh a lot with Alice because we were helping this relative of ours. And um, <laughs> every exam he had an excuse. Why did you get here? here? I went there already, but... <laughs> <laughs> so... So anyway, he got a certificate, but But every time they had something, he alikuwa na kitu. You blame everything. Your guilt, let's learn to forgive others. So the only way of us to get out of that sea, thank you, safely, is to remove your guilt and stop blaming others at the same time, so that you are going to be saved so that you don't crash when you fall. Thirdly, I cannot give away what I don't possess. You see, we read and said, it, it is Jesus, he's the one talking, and he says, if you want to be forgiven by your heavenly father, also learn to forgive others. So because you have received, you can also release it out. I'm not saying it is easy. I'm saying you can. I'm saying it is possible. Because it is basically impossible to impart something to another person that you have no fully experienced if the majority of people on this planet have never experienced the unconditional forgiveness of God, then it is no wonder most of them have difficulty forgiving others. And because of the world, we carry along the world with us. I, last Sunday I told you there are some people ata anapa. Ata Christ wa kirudi, suwezi kumsamehea. Now then you wonder, query, now naenda wapi? Binguni. Gani? Labda hii iko hapa. Hapa 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 juu. Because you see I have had people sick. Not long ago we went and buried a man that um, the picture we had from the daughter. The guy lived on the grace of God for over 2 years two years. And I think one time I took a few pastors, we passed by my friend and we prayed for him. But he really preached to us. And for him, even though he was so sick and so pain, there was pain around him, he still has had a word of God in his heart. Actually, he preached to others. He won many souls to Christ at that level. When, when what we are told by the daughter and what we see, there are different things. Why? Because this person learned to forgive and carry no guilt in him. At one time, he's even wondering, but the grace of God sustained this man and he knew how to forgive others. Now I come to you. Just a headache that runs for one week. You blame God 
and the pastor hakukuweka mafuta vizuri kwanza kwanza ule 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 aliweka mafuta tulikuwa tudogo sana angeweka nyingi itiririke 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 you know you want to blame everyone and finally you say hata huyu Mungu sijui kama nitakuwa nikimwamini tena nimetoa tithe nimetoa have you there are people when they get to that level they blame even god and they count their faithfulness they forget wacha nikuatie hapo si nilikwambia hapa kuna mtu mmoja tulirudishia tithe yake but it is because when he got the money he came to my office <laughs> that way i was able to take and then we prayed you know can i tell you something god sometimes does not answer my prayers and i don't know why is it good or bad i don't sit in his council so me i only pray i pray god heal if he doesn't so this guy uh, this lady walked into my office oh pa- pastor nimekuja eh, nimepata hizi pesa nataka kutoa tithe nataka tuombe tukubaliane na wewe bas tukakubaliana na yeye amen vile tunakubaliana na wengi akatoka akaenda biashara yake ikachomeka akarudi nabia pastor nima 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 <laughs> then I told, I told her we don't do that. Eh ni muko joke. So I called accounts accounts uh, those those years one of the pastors was a, the accountant there I said please look for money and return hizi pesa za huyu za huyu dada. And we alipopewa hizo pesa hata kanisa alihama hata nini alihama kila mahali sawa sawa. You you want to blame god you miss it but if you have received it maybe you can learn to to forgive others this was just introduction i want to finish in the next 10 minutes can you imagine that yani leo tutatoka kwa service quarter past can you imagine that so may so be it One guy was my lecturer at Park. And uh, one time I'm getting in with my Volkswagen and um, before I park, I used to park it next to the cafeteria for various reasons. Unajua ukipaka karibu na cafeteria, unaweza toka uitwe na chief cook akwambie chapo zimeiva pastor unaweza onja moja so that as you go to class. But then when I was there, I had a commotion by the way hiyo university imebadilika wale mnasoma siku hizi ilikuwa military dorms zilikuwa kama za high school so in one of the dorms <laughs> kukatoka jamaa na bage anakimbia nikasikia anakimbizwa nikakimbizana naye nikashika eh pastor bukuja sasa mimi kwa sababu ya utundu wangu nilikuwa nimezoea kushikwa na polisi na wakikushika wanashika hapa nyuma. Kwa hivyo nikashika kwa kwa jamaa nikakainua. Asante asante asante. Sikuinui. <laughs> the acting principal his name was George Foreman, a very godly man. So I took the boy to George Foreman with the students saying stone him. Hey, and then I say pana msipige then when we took to the mwalimu this is what he told us right here actually he lectured to us there right here you have an opportunity one to stone him two to take him to police or to forgive him and then he said the lowest is to stone him second lowest is to take him to police the highest is to forgive which one do you take all the students said police <laughs> we took him to police apa kasaran we went back to school to class 
Then he lectured on us. He said, now according to the Bible, you are supposed to go and visit those that are in prison. <laughs> yeah. So he said, especially the one whose property was stolen should be going there to pray with him and to forgive him. I don't know what the, how the case went. But the point that I'm bringing is from this man of God who would teach us the principles of forgiveness because the highest is to forgive, love, release him. But the lowest is to stone him or kill him. Then, fortunately, he was also going to teach us 1 Corinthians. And in 1 Corinthians, every chapter, he gave us principles. But the highest in every chapter was love. Whether it is in marriage, whether it is in doctrine, whether it is in love, whether it is in speaking in tongues and gifts of the Holy Spirit, the highest was love. Why did he learn that? Because he himself forgave someone who raped his daughter, looked at the rapist in the eye and said, you are free. When he told us that, we could tell. Because he knew what forgiveness is, and he had forgiven others, he would tell us to forgive others. Now we have received forgiveness from God. We need to learn to forgive others. Let's learn to forgive others. Learn to forgive others. In this church, there was a drama sometime. I, and the drama was someone wanted to kill the husband. And there were members here. We read them in the papers. We read them in the papers. The husband said, I forgive her. I thought that was great. The person who wanted you dead, now you can stand and forgive. Now that is God. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Is key. I want to finish with this little story and then I'll be done. Somebody called Dumb Smith Jordan had to learn to forgive the hard way. In 1885 in the US, his sister, there were two in the family, his sister People took her, abducted her. So she disappeared for five days. And on the sixth day, they found the body. Mutilated, killed, and everything that you can think about. The father and the mother and the brother, of course, took the body and they buried. A couple of days after, they received a letter from her. Unajua ni hile siku P.O. box Kenyona Primary School Private box Kenyona Primary School Now to get to Kenyona Primary School Ilikuwa inatoka Nairobi Kama umetumia Nairobi Inawekwa box moja kubwa imeadikuwa muranga Arafu inaeda wapi? Muranga Kuna siku ya kuenda muranga Na basi za siku hizo Ikiwekwa saa saba Inafika muranga jioni Kwa hivyo ni the following day I'm trying to give you how how communication. Sinonde kwambia barua ilikuwa inachukua muda. Alafu inatoka muranga, sasa inachukuriwa ya kegumo. Yote ya kegumo. Kuna mali panaitu wa kegumo. Kegumo. <laughs> Sanduku ya kegumo. Na yo gari inapanda, inapanda, inapanda. Kuna siku ya kupanda, ya kupanda, baka. Kegumo. Tena inakuwa sorted out. Yoni siku ingini ya kuwa sorted out. Ravi natoka kigumo, dio hiyo, dio hiyo, dio hiyo, dio hiyo, dio hiyo, dio hiyo. Kama niza primary kwanza zinapereko kwa area education officer. Arafu, basi, inafika kenyona. Sasa ikifika kenyona, haiwezi peandu wa siku hiyo. Kwa sababu, watu lazima waende kanisani. Na watu walikuwa wanapenda kanisa, githae, 
kila watu kama wedi kanisa barua yako itaitaniwa kanisani kwa hivyo utakuja pale upata barua ya Madhoni wa Morasia jiri wa kerudhi githa <laughs> dirago wa githa you know so it takes almost a whole week so the letter did not get to where they lived until after a couple of days they had buried and the letter was written by the sister and the sister said please don't you worry about what has happened don't you worry about me because me i have gone to see my father but i pray for you and then she quoted a scripture all things work together for good a month after that the guy who killed kept on writing to them telling them how he killed her so he would take a statement of how she died you know just to torment them tormented them Fortunately hata kama ilichukua muda mrefu alikamatwa. Najua barua nayo inafuatagwa pale iliingilia nini nini. Muda ni mrefu lakini alikamatwa. Na akafungwa. Kwanza akafungwa dabomada. Kwa sababu hizo barua zake. Miaka kumi ilipoisha. Amefungwa, amewekwa kandrumu kule kifo ya milele. Akaokoka akaandikia huyu bwana barua bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe tena mimi naitwa fulani wa fulani naitwa ber niliua dada yako nimeokoka na mpenda Yesu unaweza nisamehea think about it unaweza nisamehea unaweza nisamehea <laughs> Sio ni ngumu. Nisamehea aliyeua my sister na akanionyesha vile alimuua na tomente alizofanya kwake. Alafu anaomba msamaha hakuna kitu kama hiyo. Lakini alipokuwa akiomba Bwana akaendelea kumsaidia kumsaidia na after a couple of years naye akamwandikia akiwa jela akamwambia kweli nimekusamehea. To forgive her this is the word that came into her heart Ephesians 4 and verse 32 for that it says and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgive one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you It wasn't easy it wasn't overnight but God gave him the answer that he needed. We are to forgive just as Jesus Christ forgave us. So she wa he was able finally to sit down and write back and tell the killer you are forgiven. There is a great comparison between receiving God's forgiveness and granting forgiveness to others. There is similarity. In Luke 7 verse 41 to 47, then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to another. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simeon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss or from you didn't kiss you didn't give me a kiss of greeting but she has kissed my feet again and again from the time I first came in you neglected the courtesy of oil, olive oil to anoint my head but she has anointed my feet with a rare perfume i tell you her sins and they are many 
have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. A few years ago, a lady with colon cancer who had only four months to live was interviewed about her illness. And she was asked, how does it feel to know that you are terminal? And this was the answer. The truth is, we are all terminal. The only difference is that some of us realize it, but others don't. That was her answer. Yani wengine atujui, mmekaa na mtu na ni terminal. Huyo mmekaa na ni terminal. Na ajui. Kwa hivyo hiyo ndiyo tofauti. Wale wanajua na wale hawajui. Yeye akawa anajua. Kwa hivyo inamaanisha hivi, Simon ambapo walikuwa wametembea kwa nyumba yake. Tofauti ya Simeon and the prostitute, they suffered from terminal disease of sin. They both were and they both needed forgiveness from Jesus. The only difference was their awareness of their condition. The prostitute understood her need. Simeon denied his. He thought he was okay. Why I can not forgive? Maybe I don't understand it. Or maybe I'm afraid of doing it, but most likely I just haven't experienced it. The good news is that unconditional forgiveness is available even today. May God help us to experience forgiveness. Because if we are going to forgive others, allow your spirit to experience forgiveness. Yani ukai ujue Condemned to die. But Jesus took your place. Forgiven. Set free. Meza hiyo. That here, this was me. But God has forgiven me. Then I can forgive others. Because if I don't experience forgiveness, I cannot forgive others. Even you that are couples here, may the Lord release to you the experience of forgiveness so that you can forgive your spouse. Those that have not forgiven or not experienced forgiveness, they are so, it's like they think they are, uh, have, you, have you ever listened to some testimonies? And then you have said, I I think I'm better. That's how people argue out. Ni kama encounter. Encounter tukija tusikia watu wameokoka tunasema oh kama watu wanaenda kule kuokoka na mimi nimeokoka naenda kufanya nini. Those are some of the arguments that we bring. But listen. May God release experience of forgiveness. And I say experience real experience of forgiveness so that you can forgive others. Our heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful that you have allowed me to lay some foundation on this issue of forgiveness. It's a battle. But Lord, by the time we finish the series here, some of us will have not only forgiven others, but they will have forgiven themselves. Because they live with the guilt and it has tormented them and it has hurt some of their egos. But Lord, I pray that healing balm of Gilead will flow. When every eye is closed and head are bowed, maybe you are here and you have not even experienced the first forgiveness which comes from Christ our Lord. You are there, you are not born again, but you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to experience, because if you have never experienced it, you cannot release it to others. If you lift up your hand up, I will see it and I will pray with you. Someone will spot you, and they will help you, bring you where I am. And we are going to pray together. Yes, you have never experienced forgiveness of sin. But you want to, re to receive that forgiveness even this morning. If you lift up your hand, we will spot you quickly. And we want to pray with you as we bring this service to a close. Maybe you are there and you are saying, Bishop, you are right. 
I struggle with forgiveness because I've never experienced it. Not from my parents, not from my colleagues at work, not even from myself. I need to experience forgiveness. If that is your cry, and that's what you're saying, I want to ask you to stand on your two feet. You're saying, Bishop, I have not experienced forgiveness. I have not been forgiven to feel the touch. I have relatives, I have parents, I have this and they have done this, my employers and so on. But I pray that I can experience a bit of it so that I can release it to others. That's what you're saying. Stand on your two feet and I'll pray with you right now. Be honest with yourself how difficult it has been for you to forgive others. And you're saying, Lord, I want to forgive others. You can only do so if the Lord opens your spirit and releases that bliss of forgiveness. And you feel the forgiveness, not only of the sins that you have done, but of even the things that you struggle with. Feel the bliss of forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, those that are standing, honest men and honest women that are saying every time it happens the struggle is how do I do it? How can I do it? When I haven't experienced such. And therefore Father I pray the spirit of the living God will blow into their spirit a bliss and a release of forgiveness into their spirit so that they can forgive others and forgive themselves. I want to thank you, Lord, and I want to bless you. For this we ask in Jesus' name. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord prosper you. In Jesus' name.